Welcome to This Is My Architecture. I'm Matt from AWS, and today we're in Las Vegas for the AWS reInvent Conference. I'm joined by Hugh Emerson, the CTO for StoreReduce. Thanks for joining. Hi, Matt. So tell us about StoreReduce. So StoreReduce is an abstraction layer for object stores like Amazon S3, and it adds features to the object stores that are, are not always present. So things like um, deduplication and, and object cloning. Okay, so if you're an enterprise and you want to back up a bunch of data either in the cloud or on premises, you can use StoreReduce to do that efficiently? Yes, that's right. And uh, you can save a lot of money, and you can also save um, on the transfer, the bandwidth transfer into AWS. Okay. So Not to save bandwidth costs, but just to um, reduce uh, the, the amount of uh, infrastructure that you need. Yeah, because inbound is free, right? So that's right, yes. Okay, so when you're on-premises, let's start there. So Sam, an enterprise customer, do you guys have like a storage appliance on-prem? Yes, so we have a virtual appliance that runs on-prem in a VMware cluster, and um, you can deploy um, that appliance on-premises on uh, to deduplicate your data before you move it off-premises and into um, the object store, into Amazon S3. Okay, so when you said sort of more cost-effective before, the, by deduplicating it basically takes up less space on S3? Yes, it takes up less space uh, and um, just as importantly, less bandwidth uh, on, on the, the, uh, the ingest as so well. So it can get there quicker and doesn't saturate your link. Yes, exactly. And um, storage use always encrypts the data um, in flight, so the data is always encrypted, regardless of whether you're using uh, Direct Connect or, or going over the public internet. Yeah, so data security and you know data encryption is so important. So you mentioned encryption in flight. So once this data lands yeah. in S3, is it also encrypted? Yes, so um, we can um, encrypt the data before it lands in S3, before it leaves the storage use appliance, um, using keys that come from Amazon K KMS, mm. um, or they can come from a, a non-premise hardware security module. Oh, that's interesting. So you can use KMS to help with the encryption or use your own HSM on-prem. Absolutely, it depends on your security requirements. Okay, very cool. So I, I see a Snowball down here as well. So is this something that on-premises customers are using too, or how are you using Snowball today? So when you're moving a lot of data from on-premises, the first backup or the first set of backups that you do is not going to deduplicate very well. It's not going to get that reduction. So in order to solve the, the, the network transfer problem, um, we use a Snowball. We do our first, we dedupe the first load onto um, a Snowball. We ship that into S3. And then once it arrives in S3, we can continue deduping over the network. Okay, so you're, you're deduping it first, using the appliance on-premises, putting it in Snowball, and then shipping that to Amazon to get on S3. Is that correct? Absolutely, yes. Okay, so that sounds like a great solution for customers who have data on-premises that they want to securely and quickly back up into S3. What about customers who have made the move to AWS, who have workloads on AWS? Is this what you have drawn up here? Yes, that, absolutely. And so um, customers who've got you know, all of their systems in, in Amazon or, or some portion of their systems in Amazon, they still need uh, somewhere to back up that, that's, um, that's very durable, very reliable, um, but they also need to reduce the cost of, of storage because, um, you know, disk is still not free. So if you have a bunch of mission critical workloads running on EC2, you definitely want to back up either the user data or even the application data to S3, for example, and you can use store reduce for that. Absolutely, yes. So I see you have multiple availability zones. You have three, in fact, mm -hmm. uh, and what looks like EC2 clusters in each. Can you tell us about how you have it set up from sort of a high availability or, or scalability perspective? Yeah. So um, you can deploy storage use as a single instance um, in EC2, or you can deploy a, a cluster of instances. And in this case, we're showing a cluster of instances. And the reason that you, you deploy a cluster is that you either want um, more throughput than you, can, than you can get from a single instance, or you want higher availability than you can get from a single instance. So when you say so more throughput, like how, much are, like how much throughput are people requiring on the higher end? Well, um, on, the, on the higher end, you, you, you might be looking at um, you know, hundreds of terabytes a day. Wow. Um, and you can be looking at you know, being able to ingest, you know, some of our larger customers, they can ingest up to a petabyte a day. Wow, so when you have petabytes of backup you know, per month, uh, yeah. you're going to need a lot of throughput, and you're going to need, in, in fact, that points to why it's important to do this, because it's going to be expensive if you don't dedupl deduplicate and other things to your data before you store it in S3. Yeah, absolutely. But at that scale, at that throughput, how do you handle that? Can you scale the clusters up and down to handle different throughput needs, or how does that yeah. work? Yeah, so, so the, the way that we get the throughput uh, and the availability is, is that we scale the cluster out. Um, and um, what we've done is we, we shard our, um, our workload across um, a, a cluster of EC2 instances to get that throughput, to get whatever throughput the customer requires and um, the level of availability also that they require. So does the sharding actually work across availability zones within the clusters? Or? 
Yes, it does. That's really interesting because when we talk about sharding and sort of distributing data in this way, I usually associate it with like a NoSQL database. But I guess in a lot of ways, th this use case is no different. A absolutely, and um, it's because we're we're basically we're maintaining a database on these EC2 instances that um, is uh, that contains all the metadata about where that uh, that data is stored and uh, what's been deduplicated. Okay, so you have the data. Uh, coming from the, the workloads that's getting sent mm -hmm. to the store reduced clusters. And I see here you have what looks like a VPC endpoint. Uh, what, yeah. is, what is this used for? Is, it, is that sort of a similar case where customers want to keep things private? Yes, ab absolutely. So, so some customers, they, they don't want their traffic exiting the, their VPC, yeah. um, but they still need to get to S3, which is a public service. So they have to go through a, a VPC endpoint. So what happens is the data comes out through uh, the storage use instance, and or instances, and it gets routed through the VPC gateway and then directly into S3. Great, and in the cloud, I imagine it's the same scenario where you're leveraging KMS for encryption as well, is that correct? Yes, yes, so basically KMS integrates into the, uh, into the storage use instances and it provides a source of keys, you know, that are securely managed and very highly available so that um, you can always get to your data, but no one else can. Great. So we were talking about scaling just a second ago, and we were, we were focusing more on when you scale up for from a throughput perspective. Mm -hmm. um, does that work in both ways? Like if I if disaster strikes and I need to quickly retrieve my data that I've backed up with StoreReduce, can I scale up my clusters to get data that way as well? Yes, you, you can. So I mean, you can you know you can double the size of your cluster to effectively double the the retrieval throughput of your cluster. Great. So it's both for ingress and egress. So. Yes. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Well, I love what we're seeing here because you have options for the kind of enterprise customers that I work with all the time, you know, who, who may want a hybrid scenario connecting over private lines with Direct mm -hmm. Connect. And likewise, even when they're in AWS, perhaps they want to connect privately to S3 with VPC endpoints. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see that integration. In addition to the encryption you've done with KMS, it's mm -hmm. really kind of an enterprise grade solution. Oh, thank and the you. scalability both in and out is nice. It's, it's a really nice architecture. Thank you. And thanks a lot for sharing with us today. Thank you, Matt. And thanks for watching. This is my architecture. <laughs>